Well, I mean, I've, I, I'd, I'd like to think I was sort of a fairly early adopter of getting on the web and running websites, and, and it's been a, a, a cost for me forever. Um, but I always kind of looked at it as a, a way of kind of uh, getting closer to the, to the public and seeing what they want. Um, so we use kind of everything. Um, some things I like more than others, and I think some things work more efficiently than others. You know, Twitter is great for better, getting the message out there and running campaigns and stirring the pot, which is part of my life, you know, whether it's government or, um, you know, America, American government, you know, or essentially engaging with local communities to get fired up about certain things. Um, Facebook's really like a website. You know, it, it kind of allows us to people scratch a lot deeper and use videos, pictures, recipes in many different ways. Uh, but in, to be honest, Instagram for me was just a, an amazing way of democratizing being creative. And it, it allowed my dad to take a good picture and put depth of field and crop it and make it look beautiful and put a caption. And I don't know, I think, um, I mean, I really like Twitter, but there's something about words that's quite poisonous. So, it, it, you know, one of the downsides of Twitter is it can be very bitchy. Oh, and we um, have your, uh, your, uh, uh, your feed up. Uh, yeah. That's, well, that's, it, it, what, this, yeah, Kevin? <laughs> what <laughs> this tells me, I've got about 500,000 users on Instagram. So what this tells me is that my community are not particularly interested in the web. <laughs> 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 there's only 485 people in... What is it? 20 minutes. Jamie, but, Jamie gets really concerned if after he posts a photo, there's not a certain amount of likes on his photo. And yeah, he'll, that, he'll, he'll, he'll change oh, the filter well if that's it doesn't the work. Feedback. Oh, so you mean if you don't get 10,000 likes like the next no, one? No, no. I think I tell you what, most, most of my stuff's about food. So if whoever's doing it scrolls through, that was me and Kevin having dinner last is that, night. Is that yesterday night? You know, that was just random stuff. That was my little baby. You know, that was, we were sourcing prosciutto with Dario Cecchini in Italy. Um, but you kind of get... It's, it's kind of funny um, what engages with your audience. You're constantly getting to know who they are. You can put a picture up, and sometimes you have to delete it straight away because they get really pissed off. Um, Give me an example. Um, well, I, I went who, to... A, who did you piss off and what did you post? Well, I went, I went, it was my friend's <laughs> birthday the other day, and, and, and I, don't really get, I don't get out much, but um, we went and did this weird zombie world. And it was very childish, but it was great fun. And um, I put up this picture of me getting eaten by zombies. Um, and I had a gun to my head. Oh, that no. didn't work. That didn't work. <laughs> uh, they didn't like that. I deleted that within I saw about... That and I was within, like, this you, is not going to go well. I deleted that within about three minutes. It's um, not going to go well. But, you know, I think it's a snapshot of life. But I think also what's nice about Instagram is um, um, if you put anything up on TwitPix, it goes in the press around the world, even if it's a rubbish picture. So I, somehow, in Kevin's copyright laws, um, the papers don't use this um, because it's not their copyright. Um, so I, I actually put a lot of moments of my life in there, but also I kind of I started using Instagram to update my Twitter and my Facebook. Right. And do, um, you, do you look at the feedback as well? Except yeah, of course. What is it? What, what catches your, your eye first? The number of likes? Um, not the Instagram likes, by no, the way. No, com comments, really. Comments. I mean, I normally scan through the comments. But you have 233 just on that picture right now. Well, I think uh, yeah. what makes it so good is, is the honesty that that comes with the photos. I think Jamie and I were talking just backstage about how, you know, companies and brands that use Instagram, the best and most successful ones are ones where it comes hey, across look. as honest. See, this stuff is great. Genuine. I mean, we, th this was an interesting one. I went to Harvard. I got an amazing award from Harvard um, called the Harvard Cup. And I had to do a speech in front of an equally scary audience of clever people, all the doctors and professors and stuff. So I just put on Instagram in, in a not particularly beautiful way. You know, dear Instagram, you know, you can read it there. You know, and, and I got, you know, 901 bits of content. And I've got to say, probably 700 of those comments back were brilliant and beautiful and sort of from the heart. So they're, they're a really amazing community. And I think, you know, the recent things I've done on Instagram, which are quite funny, is um, recruitment. You know, I put an advert. I just wrote down I'm looking for, a, a, you know, a young designer. Apparently, you can't say young, but I did. Um, um, I was really looking for an operator, a brilliant, diligent, young operator that's just passed to come and work with me in the office um, across all the projects that I do. And, um, you know, Instagram's really about 10 hours. That's what, it's kind of, that's what the content... It does, of course, you can go back, but what happens is in sort of 10 hours. And we had about 300, you know, job 
resumes come straight through. From, a, from, Insta from Instagram within about two hours, you know, of really good designers. So now the problem is not do we get, how do we get staff, but how do we, <laughs> how do we go through the talent? Um, it's been really amazing to watch people build audiences on Instagram. Um, for a while, we were, you know, call it 10 million users, and now we're much, much larger than how that. How much? Uh, much, much larger. How much? Much, much larger. <laughs> um, greater than 50 million, let's Jimmy, say. Jimmy, you, so, you'll have to help me. Um, you know I know I have there. to help you. He won't even game. tell me, and I got him drunk last night. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. It was, I thought it was water. So um, <laughs> we honestly, we were very small, and it's, it's wonderful to watch some of these brands that build uh, followings, like Burberry, for instance, I think does a really amazing job. If you don't follow them on Instagram, you should check it out because they've done a wonderful job of taking you know, what truly defines their essence, which is their product and clothing, but also you know, iconic images of the UK. And, Do you know what's good about Burberry? Like Burberry's, their creative director is Chris, um, Chris Bailey, who's right. one of the nicest, most precious, brilliant, young fashion people. And he's so kind and creative and makes everyone around him feel so warm. And I think you can see that through their advertising. I think you can see that through what they do on Instagram. Right. And I think there's a real, I, I kind of, I think sometimes you hear techie people or businesses talking about new media and Instagram and this and that. And it's, you know, Keek is the new one for video, 36 seconds, and that's just a little startup. And, you know, you've got, I think um, that you've, got yeah. you've got Pinterest, which I think makes crap look good, but it's kind of, it, you know, it's, it's, I mean, I admire them for what they've done, but I, I'm not sure how useful it is. It's good for mood boards, I guess. Um, you don't use it? I do use it, but it bores me. Um, it doesn't fulfill me. But I think the nice thing is it's good for many people, people in different ways, of course. But I think when you're talking about businesses using it, um, the way I look at it is it's, it's just like instruments. It's like, a, it's like an empty stage with a drum kit and a guitar, and what businesses need to do is make sure they get passionate musicians that get it How about to, to upload it. Because it's not just about uploading stuff. I think if I, if, I mean, I don't, I don't sell stuff, you know, I, I, don't, or like, I, I don't remember selling stuff on Instagram. And, and if I did, I don't think they'd be bothered. It's not like Twitter, if you sort of say, oh, I've got a book coming out, and they say, oh, stop selling to me. You know, it's like, I think on Instagram, they wouldn't really care, but I don't. It's quite, that's quite an intimate expression for me. But when you ask them a question, they come back, smash. Whereas on Facebook, they're much more engaged with buying into things or experiences or things that you've done. But, but you read, so you read all your comments, so these posts to Twitter and Facebook, you read all the comments and replies uh, them? I, I, I That's a full-time job. No, right? no, I dedicate about 15, you know, not really. I get 15 minutes a day to scan through stuff. Um, and, and you have a team that... Yeah, I've got a digital team it? that run the website, and the, re the website is pretty robust. We have about four to five million people go through there a month and it's kind of busy and Twitter's about two and a half million and um, Google Hangouts about half a million and uh, Instagram's at half a million and you know you start throwing in a few other ducks and ducks. It's a lot of people but I think you know I think the truth is we're all sort of we're all novices at this really and um, content is definitely I mean really what the stuff that I do that really works is about emotion or content, uh, recipes. That's what they come, you know, people, we got two and a half, you know, million Twitter followers because they want the free recipes. I was just getting makeup. I don't know if you know, I've got nice makeup in here. And there's a lovely young lady doing the makeup at the back and she's never bought one of my books, but she gets all my recipes off the internet for free, <laughs> which is, of course, that's really bad news <laughs> for me <laughs> um, because I, I pub, I'm a publisher, you know, I publish. That's, that's how I make my living. But um, I think also you have to be kind of the internet's about being generous. Um, and if I think you're good enough or you touch people, then they well, might. I guess you could monetize it if you wanted yeah, to. Yeah, I mean, we've, you know, we do a little bit of advertising and stuff, and I don't like doing too much. And, it, I, 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 you know, we, we, we never did until about a year and a half ago, but the cost of the team, you know, it's 14 people running the website, and there's, you know, loads of recipes going up and changing videos. I mean, it's a big, it's a big job. And that's coinciding with all the kind of, you know, um, broadcasters around the world and stuff this like that. This is Hugh McLeod uh, from and Getting Void, who is, uh, who is doing uh, a few cartoons for us. I think yeah. the, that's, um, that's cute. It can be. Twitter can be very bitchy, my God. And also, what's nice on Instagram is when, when you get a freak or a fruitcake or a nutcase um, or someone that's horrible, I can just go in there and he allows me to go 
bar, and then I can go through it and delete all his comments. That's a really, I go like, kiss my ass. <laughs> um, but on Twitter, you're kind of left with this debris of shite, even if it's not true. Um, which is just hanging out there. And then you go and do an interview like a year and a half later, and they quote something that's not even true. Um, so, yeah. Ke I, Kevin, we should, we should probably uh, say that we, you know, we agree that you can't really talk about Instagram and that little company that you're doing deal, a deal with. Yes. So I just wanted to make it clear that if you expect the big Instagram news... Um, well, I mean, I think one of the cool things about Instagram right now and in the situation we're in is... Um, how well it works with all the different networks. I think if you look at how Jamie uses it and how other brands use it, it's really fascinating to see them put content onto Instagram but then broadcast it. Look good, because I'm taking a picture I, of I you. I can look good. That's going on Instagram. I'm wearing makeup, it'll work. Yeah. Um, how they broadcast it to other networks, like Twitter, Facebook, et cetera. And that democratization and that, that openness, I think that is the basis of our platform. Um, I think where, where is it going? Oh, where is which the, the platform? Today you're uh, you arguably the best right. picture service mobile. You've, so I mean, you, you said even 50, scrolling 50 back through, million users, right? Even scrolling back through Jamie's uh, feed, it's actually really interesting to see how many photos back in the past we forget about. I think you made the comment. It feels like Instagram is only ever ten hours old, right? Yeah. In your feed, and that's one of the things we want to change. We want to make it feel like that content that you produce a year ago, that photo that you took at you know, Le Web Paris, you can show that to your friends, you can, you can discover that. And we're trying really hard to take all the data that's come into Instagram and let you see through it in the past. I um, think one of the cleverest things that they did is you know, they kind of left the API open in the back end of Instagram. And I think a lot of people wouldn't have done that, you know, to sort of to leave the gates open to the world of like code writers and stuff. And I think, what, you know, some of them, correct me if I'm wrong, but a lot of the awards that you've won have been from other people doing great things with your platform. So I think yeah, that, I mean, was, that was, for me, that was quite interesting because, you know, I've got, frig, I've got fridge mag magnets now with, you know, my favorite pictures on it. And yeah, the, the API has totally allowed a, a huge ecosystem around Instagram. Um, we don't do prints. We don't do magnets. We don't do books. Um, and there's this large ecosystem growing of people who have built even a website, right? The website you were just showing actually is in our website. It's Statagram, I think, right? Yeah. Um, and that's really inspiring because what people have built on top of the platform that we built, we're about the mobile phone, we're about you know, taking photos on the go. Um, these other people have figured out interesting ways to build on top of that. And you know, when we were talking yesterday, I think I start to hear actually more about the third party services than I do Instagram itself, and that really excites me. But I think that's a, I think that's a generous spirit. You know, I think having that generous spirit where new talent can exponentially grow and even on recipes, from my, from my point of view. But you think it's it, true, actually, because you, you were a celebrity before being a celebrity on Instagram and Facebook and, and Twitter, right? Yeah, so but it's I, a new talent, but it's actually very Well, tough I, to I, for me, it was a, ve a vehicle that I preferred because I think that when people express through pictures, it brings out nicer yep. parts of their brain. And when people express through words, it can bring out... It's very easy to be horrid or say something that you wish you'd never said. And I think pictures are more generous like that. So I, li I like the spirit of that. Um, Do you think video will take off too? I think if video is structured and no one's done it yet, uh, I don't think video well enough. It is very difficult. Very it difficult. is? You, yeah. You're working on that? No, I, I just think that video, when you see it in mobile, I think I was trying to so show someone a, a, a video last night at dinner and you know it took three minutes yeah. to load. So you want a quick, it's you want a fast experience with mobile, right? And you want to be able to produce really quickly as well. With Instagram, I think one of the magical things about it is that you can have a photo, make it beautiful, and post it to the world within seconds. And with video, that's the thing I personally have been struggling with. Is but it'll get there, won't it? Yeah, I think as, so. As it gets faster. Yeah, absolutely. And there's some really interesting things coming out of video. I think the cinemagram stuff's really interesting. It's not even video. It's not really photos. It's somewhere in between. I, I don't think, think anyone's got it yet, though. No one's got it and yet, but um, at the same time, it can be very large, I think, because some of the content, like imagine watching Jamie you know, teach you how to you know, cook an omelet or something, right? That, that could be really interesting content and something that you can wake up to in the morning and browse just like you browse a tweet and Instagram or whatever. So It has I, to be I, short, though. Yeah. You, you don't want hours and hours of content. I think like little snapshots, little mini films, like little, little, like little adverts, little 45 seconds max. Jamie, you know, can, you, can you explain what keeps you busy these days? You have a mission. I 
So you had ah. many times, you, you were dropping a half a ton of sugar on stage. Ah. Um, is the, it you, you're trying to save a world of uh, not bad really. food? No, I'm not really. I, I, I kind of found myself, th through the job that I do, I found myself on a platform where if I didn't do certain things, it wouldn't be right. You know, so, you know, um, many of the things that I do now, I wouldn't have dreamt of uh, 10, 15 years ago. I mean, actually, with Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, you know, s some of the most important things that we use it for, bar the recipes and, and communicating with our uh, communities, our communities are very active. When we ask people something, they're very active. They're very um, pretty active here, too. Um, um, oh, I'm sure. Is there anything uh, um, we can help you with? Well, no. <laughs> Currently? Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'll give you some examples. Some of the stuff that we've seeded um, in the last few weeks is the UK guys here, I know half of you are from the UK, there was a girl called Martha in the press that got banned from putting up pictures of her school lunches. So, you know, with two and a half million tweet, you know, Twitter followers, you know, we sort of supported her and got asked everyone to retweet. And, you know, with, that pretty much trended within the next hour. And, you know, that kind of got some decent news coverage. And, you know, what's the good that's come out of that? Well, the school dinners conversation is still a massive conversation. And at the moment, our head of education has taken away nutritional standards for the academy schools, which in this moment in time with public health is a disaster. So, you know, we're still chipping away at that. You know, just recently in America, we did a, a, a whole thing where we were seeding the story about pink slime. And I don't think you even knew what pink slime I was. I didn't, no. So pink slime was kind of a, a fairly large story around America. And basically what it was was the genius thing that is the FDA in America, um, which is a department that's supposed to protect public health, um, they struggle. Um, they allowed this company to, w to take all the meat that, that was turned into dog food or soap, uh, wash it in ammonia, and then as long as it was up to 25%, put it back in the food system. And of course, it's very low quality. Um, and you know, when we started doing stories about it online, it, just, it, it literally trended everywhere. And very quickly, you start seeing the, the opinion of the American public, which is we don't like that. We don't want that. You know, there's videos of the process and stuff like that. So McDonald's pulled out, and then you know, within a month and a half, pretty much all the brands pulled out of this particular. So it's, I guess, the food industry is as corrupt and filthy as the arms industry and the oil industry. Um, and they're probably around the same size. So I guess my job is stirring the pot. You're trying to bit. disrupt the food industry. Yeah, in a positive way, with true stories. You know, and, and what, I f what I find inspiring about my job, mm. you know, we, we, we broadcast and publish in about you know, 80 to 130 countries around the world, depending on the project. Um, That's TV? Yeah. When you say we broadcast. Yeah, okay. well, TV um, goes to about you know, anything up to 130 countries around the world, depending. Um, and publishing about 80, but I have a, a nice relationship with the audience. And when you, obviously I'm given lots of data and the bits that I choose to pass on, they always, you know, basically what I'm saying is when you give the public good, clear information, they normally make good decisions. Um, so that's kind of what I do. Just and you think you, you're succeeding in that disruption? Well, I, th I think our only hope is digital. I really do. I really, really do. You know, we've got communities around the world that find it really hard to be political, but actually they care about certain things. So, I mean, you know, in Food Revolution Day, we started that in our little office. That went to, uh, you know, 60 countries around the world, 600 cities, you know, just for one day out of nothing, you know. And um, But you, you could not, like, because there is media, you have tons of press, you can have all the press you like. The media are fantastic, and they can be fantastic if they... You want to be, um, but um, I think the the public are ama I mean, ma mainly what we do in the campaigning stuff is we try and aggregate communities. So, community. If there's a community, if there's communities across the world or America or England that are passionate about, you know, teaching kids about food, growing, you know, things that aren't right in the community. There's lots of little wars going on everywhere. If what we do is sort of join them up and sort of make them a bit more powerful. So, yeah, I, I don't know what you call it, really. Sort of facilitated activism is what we call it. Where, where do you hope to be with that plan that you have to disrupt the food industry? Well, I think it's just... It, I, you I, think it's happening? You're no, happy with constant, the result? I, I think all of us can admit that when we're challenged with competitors or 
problems or issues or ethics, being eco-friendly. I mean, we're all on a journey, and I think forms of interrogation, whatever, in whichever way they come, are, are positive. So I, I'm just going to carry on doing it. I just hope more and more people carry on. Can you on. measure the result? Um, I think measurement, I'll leave measurement for the kind of people. The problem about measurement is we've got loads of measurement about public health, and no one does anything about it. Do you know what I mean? Yep. So we know that diet-related disease is the biggest killer in the world, and we've had Harvard and Cambridge tell us all the facts, but we still don't do anything aggressive about it. So I'm going to leave measurement to the measurement people. Okay, what can we do? Uh, what would, would you say to be you know, a good person, a good citizen of the world these days, uh, when you say no one is doing anything? What, what can we no, do as no, individuals? I don't, I don't think no one's doing anything. What I'm saying is that this forum in front of us today and, and the people and the, with their mobile phones and their tablets, I think, I think great decisions in the world will be massively changed because of this, not because of, of necessarily a marketing campaign or a big, you know. I mean, like, you know, when Obama signed up on Instagram, I was like, oh, here we go, <laughs> you know. Um, and actually, I was most offended by the quality of his pictures. <laughs> I'm like, that's not a very good picture. <laughs> If you're going to be on Instagram and push your politics, at least up your game. Um, and actually, he did. It got, it got a lot better, a lot quicker. But Should we put good pictures only on Instagram? I'm a little confused, I have to admit, when I switch my phone on and I want to take a picture, do I Instagram it, do I Facebook it, do I path it, do I Twitter it, do I, you see what I mean, or do yeah. I just do what you just do? Just do it on Instagram and choose and on the options. Choose. It's so much I, easier. I mean, I think that's one of the, like I said before, one of the beauties of what we do is that we are so open and allow people to post to basically any platform. And you can use sites like If This Then That to trigger right. and, and broadcast to other places, like whether it's Dropbox, you name it, right? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and for us, uh, you know, I don't think it's about beautiful photos. And actually, one of my worries is that people prime themselves to think it's just like, if, if I want to post a photo, it's got to be beautiful. I actually think, you know, Jamie's used the word honest, and I would use the word genuine. If it's an honest and genuine photo, I think it goes really far. And, and we provide tools, I think, to make it more beautiful, but uh, that's not you, a record. If you go on the yeah. popular page, I mean, it's pretty obvious that, you know, it's, it is boobs and dogs um, and really sexy girls that, that um, still drive. Thanks, Jamie. <laughs> that's still, you know, so if you want to get into a business, boobs, pretty girls and dogs is, is, is what moves The But you, actually, you create that, right? You, you remove that stuff. Well, from I think what's interesting about what gets popular on the web is is popular. You know, it depends on who you are and where you are. And I think we need to do a better job of personalizing content because you know, to someone like Jamie, maybe you know, uh, it's about food, and to someone me like me, maybe it's food, maybe it's wine, maybe it's you know, technology, right? And I think we need to do a better job of creating these channels and these silos that allow people to, you know, learn new things about the world. But we Both have the content. And I think that's, that's the point, is we have the content. It's about exploring it. Both of you, we have um, a good thousand entrepreneurs here and uh, many more online. Um, what's your advice, like, to build, you know, because you build a, an incredible brand, you have an amazing movement that is changing the world, but you're also a very successful business person, entrepreneur. Uh, around, around yourself. How, what's your advice? Uh, and Tell I, me. I, but I don't think. I, I, you're not, not successful. I'm not sure what I can give advice to these guys. I mean, all, all I can say is, um, like that I, I, from a personal point of view, people are always trying to get their head around how we do what we do, or the books, or the restaurants, or you know. And, and I think, genuinely and honestly, honesty, like the medium. I mean, for me personally, I'm a massive geek. So whether it's cameras, film, broadcast, storytelling, pictures, you know, using a tablet, Instagram, uh, the medium of telling stories or communicating or touching people's lives or inspiring them, I love. So everything that I do is really driven purely and only by creative ideas. And if they're good enough, then they, they make money. And if they're not, they won't. That's kind of how I look at it. And I, I, Do you I, think they need to raise um, funding? Or did you raise funding? How did you start No, we, we didn't. I mean, I, we, 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 when the banks misbehaved, we got a, a few private investors in. But I do, th I do think for entrepreneurs, it's hard getting cash. Of course it is. Of course it is. And I think you, you, know, you had some of the guys from the government 
um, up here earlier. And, and, you know, and the government needs to be very wary about uh, you know, us getting left behind here. Because it's, it's, it's not like being in San Francisco. San Francisco, if you stand there, if you're in a coffee shop, you know, you've got someone having a conversation here. It, it's like a, a melting pot of ideas. And, and the joining up of the dots of a successful startup Raising tens of million, is kind of there. Selling for a billion and yeah. stuff like that. It's, yeah. it's, I, I think it's, we're nowhere near that yet here, is, um, is my personal opinion. Do you opinion. think it's changing? I think it's changing, but I think it's about a culture of facilitating the joining up of the dots, personally. But I mean, you know, I'm not, look, I'm not, a, I'm really not a digital expert. I just live in your world. But you're, you're um, a lot, you're a lot in the US, right? Or are you mostly here now? Because you've, no, you've, I, I, you've I, done like I'm mainly, schools. I, no, I'm mainly based here, but you know, like I said, we work in quite a lot of countries. Right. Kevin, what's your advice for entrepreneurs? I mean, I think entrepreneurs just need to focus on solving problems. I think too many entrepreneurs get caught up in the life of an entrepreneur, the late nights and the funding and all, all the meta stuff that actually doesn't matter. The, the, it's merely just the means to the end. Um, and I'd rather you know, see more entrepreneurs focusing on what big problems in the world they're solving. And I think that's you know, one of the things Jamie does really well is he solves really big problems or he's trying to solve really big problems. And the focus when we talk you know, on stage is about the problems we're trying to focus on and, and the things we're trying to solve. But um, too many entrepreneurs, I think, focus on all the rest of the stuff, which actually doesn't matter in the end. Because it turns out if, if you try to solve big problems, there will always be funding behind you. There will always be people willing to work for you. There will always be you know, an audience for your product. And I think that's what we tried to do with Instagram, was we solved you know, a problem of being able to communicate visually. And, and a lot of people didn't even know they had that problem until Instagram came along. And many times that happens. So you can either be solving a problem that's very defined, or sometimes you can be solving a problem. Yeah, that you know, don't you know, know it's good when my nephew, who's six, uses Instagram, and my dad, who's sixty something, is using it. You know, I think that having that stretch of audience. What what do you what what's your hope for your uh, what's his name again? Your six years old son. Uh, I've got a two year old son, but my nephew was six. Oh, nephew, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Um, what, what are you going to tell your son to go to Silicon Valley and build a startup there? Or? Uh, oh, I'll let him be who he wants to be. But I think, um, I think more, more to the case, I think, um, I think the world that this all represents, the digital world, um, the exciting thing is about quality and expression, whatever that may be. Written word, film, pictures. Um, and I think uh, in this day and age, anything that can communicate with the right people at the right time So what's, what's the mindset that you'd like to tell him to succeed and tell this room as well? Is, is it try to change the world? Is it no, 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 do, you know, do become an entrepreneur and, and, and be slow? Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I mean, I, I don't think that's the conversations I'm going to have them with my son, really. I, I just want him to uh, grow up and be happy and find his own path, really. And even his own dad didn't want to change the world. And I, I, I wouldn't even be so bold as to say that I am doing that. I'm just doing my job and chip, chip, chipping away. And sometimes, you know, you'll do a little thing and it goes crazy. And it's really only thanks to the communities of like-minded people. So I think... And you don't know what... Yeah, yeah I think, I think the, great, the great thing about all this is that as much as you can talk about it, you still, it's, still, it's still like a number one hit song. Do you know what I mean? You don't know which ones are going to stick. You don't know which ones are going to touch people or move people. Um, so your advice is experiment as you're doing? Experiment, experiment, and see, see what sticks. Well, I, I genuinely hope. I mean, I don't think my kids are going to grow up to be academic because me and, and, and their mum aren't. Um, so I hope that they can have fun being creative and tactile and enjoy people and uh, cultures and learn. You know, that's, that's what I kind of do. So I hope that's what they do. And if they do it digitally, I mean, you know, it's a very different world now. You know, um, so, you know, porn has always been over delivering online. You know, hopefully everything else starts to <laughs> get up with it. But, you know, I do think that, broad, I mean, broadcast is one of my big jobs. And I think, I'm, I'm pers I mean, broadcast, the industry, has been really tough for 10 years, budget-wise. Really, really tough. I mean, about 45% like-for-likes down in budget. Massive. A humongous problem. Um, but we're just starting to see new, new pockets of cash coming out of YouTube 
Uh, and, You're and raising funding for your... Proper course. real cash to make unique content for digi digital platforms. And, and, from, and that's happening now, which is new. And um, I think what's exciting about that is, you know, I don't know if we'll be watching telly in 10 years' time. I really don't. I know everyone talks about it, and, and we're all predicting it. But I think, I think now it's getting bedded in. A lot's going to happen in the next three years, particularly. Um, and I'm not sure if we're ready for that, you know, the flow of money and all of that stuff. But I'm excited. I'm really excited about it. I can it. see. Kevin, what's, what's coming next for you? Um, you know, we're just still really hard at work on new product ideas and features. And like I said before, I think we have all this data we want to let you explore. And it's not just about creation. It's also about exploration. Um, so that's what we're going to be most active in going forward. I think you're going to see Instagram evolve in really interesting ways going forward. So I'm, I'm really excited about it. Any final word, uh, Jamie, for that uh, audience? Good luck. I, I mean, mean, you know, this is, I've never done one of these before, but, um, you know, it's always exciting to get in these kind of things like TED and Le Web and One Young World. It's always, it's always a group of really, really interesting people. Um, it's, it's like a natural filter, isn't it? So, how know. do we interact with you? How, do they, how can they get in touch with you? So, we, you know. Me personally? Yes. They... Well, I mean, I have a conventional way of getting hold of me on the, on the website and, and JamieOliver through com. contacts. JamieOliver.com. Um, but to be honest, they're probably more likely to get me on Instagram, you know, <laughs> to be honest. And, uh, you know, but, you know, one of my guys is here today. But um, I'll, I'll yeah. pass the messages. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, I think it's, it's, it's great. I mean, one of the things that we did a few years ago was the apps. And I think that was interesting seeing how immediately that translated into sort of loyal following with the phones and the recipes and... Yeah, you have a huge community around yourself and, and you too, Kevin. But how that can move on a step, I think, is going to be interesting. Don't know. Yeah. Let's see. Excellent. Well, we hope you come back and, uh, you know, we can yeah. follow up and help you. Uh, in thanks, your, in your thanks for invading England I'm, I'm with sorry. an army of French. It's, <laughs> it's, uh, next time, make the croissants a bit better, for <laughs> God's sake. I can have you in Paris as well. No <laughs> <problem>. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. I hope Thank to you. have you again. Nice Thank you, one. Jamie. Oops, sorry.